skin tissues. You will find those skin tissues finer, softer, stronger, more absorbent. Those skin tissues best for you. Hello there. Countess Lydia Gray Doe Skin Cleansing Tissues. Those so gentle tissues bring you Eloise McElhone. Hi, everybody, and welcome to my study. I'm very glad you could join me because my guest today is really a spectacular Technicolor comet. He's been flashing over Broadway for the last 20 years. That's right. He's the man who's turned the Great White Way into Rainbow Canyon and given New York the greatest free show in the world king of the advertising sign, Mr. Douglas Lee. And um, it's spelled L-E-I-G-H, in case you want to write him any fan letters. We're going to hear more about Mr. Lee in just a moment. I know this is about the end of vacation time for most of us, but for the benefit of any of you who are going on a late vacation this year, I found a very cute story about why take a book on a vacation. Well, there were four very good reasons. One, you can always cover it with a towel and use it as a pillow if you want to lie on the beach. Number two, if you find that the desks in the post office are pretty crowded, you can uh, write your little postcards on it. Then number three, it's very useful as an extra little table at a picnic, you know, for putting your paper napkins in your pickle jars. And number four, if all else fails and it's raining and there's nothing to do, you can always read it. And now I want to get over to our guest, Mr. Douglas Lee. You know, he has really created some of the most spectacular signs that anyone has ever seen. He's had waterfalls, he's had animated movie cartoons, he's had soap suds and soap bubbles. Well, I think you saw him behind the soap bubble, so uh, let's go take a look at the bubbles and Mr. Lee in person, shall we? Hi, Doug, yeah, and well, welcome to the study. Okay, <laughs> <hand, I've been laughs> having a wonderful time, and I want to yeah. tell everybody out there that this, the, all the noises you hear, those are Mr. Lee's machines that are running these spectacular... You know, I see that these soap bubbles, that see, you've had the Times Square covered with beer suds and soap suds, and now this new idea for a shampoo. How did you get this idea? Well, this one came rather simply by walking through a five and ten cent store and seeing these um, kid toys, you know, the little bottles of the stuff, and the uh, uh, kids take a little wand, blow through it, and ten or twenty soap bubbles come out. Yeah, we work on the basis that if something is a toy, it can be compounded up to sizes of uh, rather giant proportions. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, We've worked on that idea many times, to enlarge on a toy and take it up to spectacular display. And it certainly has worked. You know, that sort of uh, follows through. I read an article about you, I think it was either in Life or The New Yorker, that said that your huge success had come because you appeal to the love of toys and gadgets in all of us. Oh, uh, that's probably true. I kind of think of myself as average on those. You know, um, uh, all grown-ups are nothing but grown-up kids, isn't that true? <laughs> Who that's plays with the true. electric train Christmas time, uh -huh. right? That's true. I bet you have a lot of fun with your work then. Tell me, what method do you use to sort of come by these ideas? Well, I have my own idea, but the fellows around the office have other ideas. Here's a, I got a little model here of something they dreamed up. They said that was me working up an idea. Oh, well, good. Let's take a look at it that's then and see how you work up these ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's snoozing, eh? <laughs> Well, I don't know. You notice the abdomen goes in and out, and disease keeps throwing the wood across there. So, But I think that I'm more wide awake than that when I work mm -hmm. up an idea, Eloise. I think <laughs> you most definitely are. I wouldn't be surprised if you were wide awake enough to take that, build a huge sign, and then sell it to somebody, well, let's see, for a mattress maybe, or a furniture company? Well, a lot of others. Caffeine-free coffee, or, uh, or uh, uh, air foam pillows or sleeping pills. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. You know, with all of these ideas in just a matter of seconds, I am not surprised that they call you the boy wonder of the advertising business. Okay. But, uh, yeah, but there's one question that I've been dying to ask you for a long time now. I've looked at that marvelous animated cartoon sign that you have down on Broadway. How does that work? Uh, before I tell you that, uh -huh. how about this boy business? I mean, I'm a... I'm grown-up man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a grown-up boy then. You don't get away with that boy business after having your own business about 18 and a half years. But you tell me about the sign. But anyhow, the, it, it's an electronic principle. One electric eye opens doors and does a lot of things, right? Right. Uh, photocell, electric eye. Well, we have 4,104 operating 4,104 lights on the outside, and we project black and white Disney-like cartoons on it, and boom, out it comes. 
a free show on Broadway. Shows to probably more people than all theater ticket purchases per day or night. Oh, that is terrific. You know, another thing that I've always been fascinated with is that tremendous blimp of yours that, that flies around with the signs, spell out different, different advertising things. I wish we could sort of get us here, but, you know, just about now, usually I talk to Ralph Paul well, about Doe Skin. No, don't talk to him uh, no? uh, right now about Doe Skin. Let me uh, put Doe Skin up in the sky in this room, a 265-foot blimp brought down within a 10-foot room. You don't think you, I can do it? You really can do that? I think so. Let's try it. Well, oh. for goodness sake, let's. See what happens. <laughs> oh, Doug. A little different. I would say that is very different. Yeah. That's the way we get over the messages or oh, the products. You, you certainly do. I just never somehow expected to see one in my living room. Listen, <laughs> I am so excited about this, Doug. You might as go over and tell Ralph Paul about us, Heard and I'm going to be right Heard back. That. Say, hey, Ralph, did you mm -hmm. see that wonderful, the wonderful blimp that Doug brought down into the living room? Yeah, I saw it. Um, oh, sorry. oh, you've got a gadget of your own, eh? Oh, yes. Well, you know, thinking of doe skin tissues, well, I went over to Doug Lee's, and I'd like you to meet a little girl after my own heart. Mm-hmm. Well, she's <sighs> cute, but it looks as if she's lost her heart to another fella. Oh, no, that's where you're wrong, Eloise. No, sir, she's given her heart to just one. Uh, doe skin tissues. Oh. Doe skin tissues. See how her heart lights up every mm -hmm. time she has the word doe skin? <laughs> I certainly do. <laughs> and you know that the hearts of all America are doing the same? Why, sure. Millions of people know all the wonderful things that they're going to get in that big box of doe skin tissues, Eloise. Mm -hmm. Well, there you're right, Ralph. And I guess my heart would light up, too, if you could see it every time I mention those so gentle doe skin <laughs> tissues. Because I find them so kind to sensitive skin and marvelous for taking off makeup. And now that I'm a housewife, they're wonderful and so absorbent for practically every household chore you can right think of. Are. I don't know how people get along without them. Oh, well, Eloise, you don't have to. No? Well, sure, well, this big box of doe skin tissues is so economical that, well, you can just have one for, we'll say, the bathroom and mm -hmm. one for the kitchen and... Oh, one for sister's room and brother's room, and oh, don't forget about that guest room, because I tell you, their hearts will just go flippity-flop for doe skin tissues, too. <laughs> oh, and not only that, you get the 400 doe skin tissues. Not just 300, but 400 of the finest quality tissues in this big economy box of doe skin tissues. Well, I can see <laughs> that you've got her heart doing flip-flops, and I don't blame her, because I can assure her that she'll never be a social flop as long as she keeps doe skin tissues around the house. All right, you are, Eloise. I'll tell you, uh, get your supply of doe skin tissues at any leading chain or neighborhood independent store. That means drug stores, grocery stores, supermarkets, variety and apartment stores. Just remember that name there, doe skin. You'll never forget the quality. Oh, say, fella, you don't have to play second fiddle. Come on to my house, I'll give you doe skin tissues. Well, thank you, Ralph Paul. Now, come on to my house and... Uh meet Mr. Douglas Lee again, the king of the spectaculars. You know, um, I noticed that you have one of the little blimps that we just saw, this time with flamingo on it. I noticed that you've been sort of plugging that uh, frozen orange juice with your attention getters, Doug. Yeah, sure have, uh, Eloise. I, I, I'm very proud and, and fond of that flamingo frozen orange juice. Mm -hmm. I know the fellow who runs it very, very well. Oh, you do? Yeah, he's, yeah I know him. We wear the same suits and part of hair the same way and use the same comb. Uh, know. I say no more. You own frozen orange juice, Flamingo brand. Well, a bunch of friends and I are <laughs> yeah, that's that. But that's how did you happen to, to go into the frozen orange juice business? Well, um, you know, you've heard about selling um, uh, uh, ice boxes to Eskimos? That I have. Well, 18 months ago when I was in California, I saw housewives drinking frozen orange juice concentrate. So I figured that's for me. I might take my product and uh, work up a product to uh, uh, like it, get a good name like Flamingo, and go to work. Uh-huh, and you have gone to work. I'd say you've gone to work in a very fast-growing industry. But now I'd like to get back to it for a minute to your other work, those, those billboards of yours. You know, one I've particularly loved and looked at for so long is that, is that tremendous waterfall that you have um, on Broadway. That's um, on the Block Long Bond Building there. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's uh, uh, Block Long. Two giant figures, 50,000 gallons of water a minute, and so forth. Oh, well, you know, I really uh, have sort of a favor to ask you about that sign, Doug. Ask me? Doug? Yeah, uh, well, you see, I have a cousin called Daredevil McElhone. Oh, Daredevil. Oh, Daredevil. Oh, Daredevil. You know? Well, you see, he's had a little trouble. Uh, he wanted to go over Niagara Falls in a barrel, and know, the police right. wouldn't let him, so he wondered if maybe he could use your waterfall. <laughs> I doubt if the fine people like that so good. 
I doubt it. Oh, I see. You mean just wearing I a barrel. I don't think they'd like uh -huh. anybody wearing a barrel. <laughs> okay, lost my head, Doug, but I bet you have a lot of strange requests, don't you? Oh, we have some, some, some really unusual requests. Uh, for example, one man likes to show the strengths of our signs by putting a, a circus elephant on top. Another one likes great, ma great magic out. Uh -huh. Disappearing Chinaman. Oh, no. Brand new. Then there's another one, uh, 20 foot, uh, 20 foot, 20 story yeah. shade coming down over the side of a Broadway building, you know, about like the Paramount building. Uh -huh. He, he could save a lot of money by just putting a sign up there and <laughs> leaving it there. I yeah. wouldn't be a bit surprised <laughs> if he could. Well, you know, all the girls are interested uh, just about now in the new fall uh, styles and clothes. What are the new styles and signs, Doug? Well, uh, one of the new ones, I'd say, would be um, traveling diorama. You've seen these um, third-dimension dioramas in the station oh, yes, move uh -huh. and third-dimension little lights over. We've got one where the whole gizmo moves, uh, the whole thing. Well, maybe uh, we could take a look at the model uh, of that? Uh, I got it here. Let me show it to you. Now, you see that? Now, that really looks like a bus going over a kind of a bumpy road, mm -hmm. doesn't it? It certainly does. Well, actually, the bus is standing still, and the mountains are moving. Now, I'm not being smart, but on, on a bright, that's, uh -huh. that's what happened. Those mountains move by there in three different speeds, and the road moves on a conveyor belt underneath it. And it's all geared 35 miles an hour. Really? Yeah. Fascinating, yeah. Doug. Well, what about some of your other ideas that you'd like to do? Well, I've wanted for about 15 of the 18 and a half years I've been in this business to put a 300-foot cigarette on top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> oh, no. Not impossible. No, I guess not. And here's one that I don't know how practical it is, but it could be done if the English wanted enough American dollars to do it. On the Rock of Gibraltar, get mm -hmm. some sharp fellows with sharp chisels to mm -hmm. work in, prudential, strong as Gibraltar. Oh, I think you might have just a little bit of trouble with the landlord there. Now, I suppose we come back to uh, ideas that you think might happen right over here, more practical ones. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but anyhow, right here, uh, here here's a, a, a very practical one would be to take a tall perfume bottle. Uh -huh or any product that's going to mm -hmm. sort of use a tall bottle, and build a building in that shape. Oh, I think that sounds like a lovely idea. Could happen. Uh, and then to just send out gentle whiffs of the perfume right by the passers-by. Oh, the girls will love you for that. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. How about this, um, an orange idea that I've got, and you'd never guess which orange is. No, I never would. A giant orange uh, made of a helium-filled balloon, and it drips uh, orange juice into a third dimension glass around the corner of a 10 story building. I think that would be, that would really be a spectacular. Can you imagine the appetite for breakfast that would give you? Well, Doug, I want to thank you for coming and being with us today, showing us these lovely models of your spectaculars. And now we have a little model for you, our Dottie Doe Award that doesn't move or anything, but I think maybe your little daughter Cindy would like her. Well, it moves when she plays. Thank you much. I bet it will. <laughs> thank you, Doug Lee. And now I want to issue to you and all of you a very friendly invitation. And it's the friendly invitation to visit your nearest Acme supermarket or American store and get acquainted with those so gentle doe skin tissues. Those so gentle doe skin tissues that are so wonderful for all handkerchief uses. In the big economy box of doe skin tissues, you get 400, not 300, but 400 of the finest quality tissues. So gentle doe skin tissues are available at any Acme supermarket or American store and other leading chain and neighborhood independent stores. And now, Eloise, who's next week's guest? Well, next week, we're going to have the very famous restaurateur, Mr. Vincent Sardi, to develop, tell us about his famous restaurant and the people who frequent it. So join me, won't you? I'll be looking for you. Until next week, then, this is Eloise McElhone saying goodbye to you all for Doskin Products. Eloise Gown was by Phil Chapman. Eloise Salutes the Stars was directed by Lou Florence.